10 Truly Wild Origins of Common Phrases Number 1. Eat humble pie has its origins in medieval English idioms. The term umbles referred to the edible inner parts of a deer, such as the heart, liver, and kidneys. These parts were considered a humbler fare compared to the choice cuts of meat. Over time, umble pie became associated with a pie made from these humble parts and was seen as a dish of lower quality. The phrase evolved to eat humble pie, signifying the act of someone figuratively consuming something less desirable as a form of humility or acknowledgement of a mistake. Along with this slice of humble pie. It, its name is Humble Pie, Mr. Wonder. I'm not surprised after all that humble pie. Number two. The origin of the phrase for Pete's sake is uncertain, and there are various theories about its source. One suggestion is that it's a euphemism for for Christ's sake, with Pete being used to avoid explicit religious references. Another theory is that it may be a way of expressing frustration or exasperation without invoking a specific person's name. The true origin remains a bit elusive, but it has become a common colloquial expression used to convey impatience, annoyance or surprise without using more explicit language. For Pete's sake. Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, for Pete's sake. Number three. Mad as a hatter. No, you didn't already know this one because it didn't originate from Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. Its origins date from the 17th and 18th centuries, well before Lewis Carroll's book was published. In 17th century France, poisoning occurred among hat makers who used mercury for the hat felt. The Mad Hatter disease was marked by shyness, irritability, and tremors that would make the person appear mad. You may think at first I'm mad as a hatter when I tell you that each cat got three different names. It's supposed to be mad as a hatter though these days. Why can't you be the Mad Hatter for once? Number four. The phrase, speak of the devil, is believed to have originated from the longer expression, speak of the devil, and he doth appear, which dates back to at least the 16th century. The idea behind it is that if you mention someone, in this case the devil, and they unexpectedly show up, it's as if your words summoned them. Over time, the phrase evolved to its more concise form, commonly used today. Well, speak of the devil! Speak of the devil. Speak of the devil and off he pops. Number five. The expression, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, has its origins in 16th century Germany. During that time, bathing was infrequent, and family members would use the same water to bathe, starting with the head of the household and ending with the baby. The water would become progressively dirtier. The cautionary saying emerged as a metaphorical warning not to discard something valuable while getting rid of something undesirable. In this case, it advises against overlooking the importance of a baby amid the process of disposing of dirty bathwater. Look, I'm not tossing the baby out with the bathwater here. But let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. But let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater, okay? Number six. The phrase black sheep of the family dates back to at least the 18th century and refers to a family member who is considered different or deviant from the rest. The color black has long been associated with negative qualities and a black sheep in a flock was considered less valuable than white ones. Over time, the expression evolved to symbolize someone who doesn't conform to the family's expectations or values. But but he's always been the black sheep of the family. <laughs> Every family has one black sheep. I was always the black sheep of my family. Number seven, avoid like the plague, is a figurative expression that gained popularity during times when the bubonic plague, a highly contagious and often fatal disease, swept through Europe. The plague, also known as the Black Death, caused widespread panic and fear due to its rapid spread and high mortality rate. As a result, people developed a strong aversion to anything associated with the plague. 
Over time, this sentiment became embedded in language, giving rise to the expression, avoid like the plague. The kind of person I normally would avoid like the plague. You avoid us like the plague. Doing a big story, the travel and leisure section is doing a, a, a big spread on, on places to avoid like the plague. Number eight. Ever heard the saying, water off a duck's back? Yeah, that can be very hurtful to people. Not to me, it's like water for duck's back. But, you know, to... no, I should just ignore these, these slanders. Just, like, water off a duck's back. Ah, you know, oh, water off a duck's back. Let's uncover it. This phrase has been in use since the 18th century and comes from the observation that water doesn't stick to a duck's feathers due to their natural oils. It means that criticism or insults have no effect on someone as if it rolls off them like water off a duck's back. Number nine. Ever wondered about the stories behind phrases like mind your P's and Q's? Just mind your P's and Q's and you're going to do just fine. And you just mind your P's and Q's, buster. And to mind your P's and Q's, you got to be nice to the nurses. Mind your P's and Q's. There are several theories about its source. One possibility is that it originated from 17th century pubs and taverns where bartenders kept track of patrons' consumption, marking P for pints and Q for quarts on a chalkboard. Another theory suggests it's derived from printing and typesetting, where lowercase p and q could be easily confused. The true origin remains a linguistic mystery, adding to the charm of this expression. Number 10. Diamond in the rough. Ah, uh, diamond in the rough. You gotta highlight your attributes You're like a diamond in the rough. Diamond in the rough used in English literature since at least the 17th century and has its origins in the world of gemology, where a rough diamond refers to an uncut, unpolished diamond in its natural state. The term was later metaphorically applied to people or things with hidden potential or qualities that may not be immediately apparent. Comment below what common phrase you'd like to unravel next.